Clark. Private members of business, Peter Norman, the member for Fraser, to resume debate on the motion appearing on the notice paper in his name. The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the member Phil Fraser. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Iconic images emerge from every Olympic Games. Golden girl Betty Cuthbert taking home three gold medals in Melbourne, Kieran Perkins' stunning performance from Lane 8 in Atlanta, Cathy Freeman carrying Australian and Aboriginal flags after winning the 400 in Sydney. But perhaps the most powerful image of the modern Olympics is this one. Life magazine and Le Monde have declared it one of the most influential images of the 20th century. An image of three brave athletes of the 1968 Mexico City Games making a statement on racial equality. And one of them was Australia's Peter Norman. It's Peter Norman's role in that moment in taking a stand against racial injustice that I want to talk about tonight. The 1968 Mexico City Games, Peter Norman ran a time of 20.06 seconds in the men's 200 metre final. Winning the silver medal and in the process setting the Australian record that still stands today. As recently as the 2000 Olympics, Norman's time would have won in the gold medal. But in 1968, it was when the Star Spangled Banner began to play after the medal presentation, that Peter Norman became a part of history. The two Americans, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, stand, heads bowed with one arm raised. A black glove on the right hand of Smith, Carlos is left. Their posture and shoelessness symbolising black poverty and racial inequality in the United States, sending a powerful message to the world for racial equality. Prior to the presentation, Smith and Carlos told Norman of their plans. I'll stand with you, he told them. Carlos recalled he expected to see fear in Norman's eyes, but he didn't. I saw only love, Carlos said. On the way to the dais, Norman borrowed an Olympic Project for Human Rights badge from the white US rower, Paul Hoffman. After Carlos forgot his gloves, Norman came up with the idea that the two Americans should share one pair of gloves. A protest like this on a global stage had never been done before. At the time, it was electrifying. Racist slurs were hurled at Smith and Carlos. IOC President Avery Brundage, the man who'd had no difficulty with the Nazi salute being used in the 1936 Olympics, insisted the two be expelled. In that moment, Norman advanced international awareness for racial equality. He was proud to stand with Smith and Carlos, and the three remained lifelong friends. At his funeral in 2006, Smith and Carlos gave eulogies and were pallbearers. As for Norman himself, he competed in the 1970 Commonwealth Games, but was not sent to the 1972 <coughs> Olympics. Some have said this is because of his action in 1968. Others say that financial pressure prevented the AOC from sending a full complement of athletes. What is clear is that in 1972, Norman consistently ran qualifying times for the 100 and 200 metres, but was not sent. It's also clear he never complained about his treatment. He never stopped thinking about himself as a runner. His tra trainer, Ray Weinberg, said he always called me coach. 32 years later, it took an invitation from the United States Olympic team for him to be a part of the 2000 Games, the United States Olympic team. The apparent treatment of Peter Norman, symbolic of the attitude of the late 60s and early 70s, the view that sport and politics shouldn't mix. In the early 1970s, a group of brave protesters took a stand against apartheid in South Africa, interrupting games played by white-only sporting teams. History has vindicated those anti-apartheid protesters, and history has vindicated Peter Norman. I'm grateful that his 91-year-old mother, Thelma, his sister, Elaine Ambler, and her husband, Michael, can be here today. Every Olympic Games produces moments of heroism, humanity, and humility. Its motto is Cetius Altius Fortius, swifter, higher, stronger. In 1968, Peter Norman exemplified this. Swifter because of his record that still stands, higher because he stood tall that day, and stronger because of the guts it took to make a stand. In the simple act of wearing that badge, Peter Norman showed the world he stood for racial equality. 
He showed us that the actions of one person can make a difference. And it's a message that echoes down to us today. Whether refusing to tolerate a racist joke or befriending a new migrant, each of us can and all of us should be a Peter Norman in our own lives. Order. On indulgence, as the mother of a young son who loves running, I'd like to welcome Mrs Norman to the chamber.